Hey everybody, Mr. McIntosh here, and this video is for you if you use Open Core Legacy Patcher to update your unsupported Mac to macOS Big Sur or macOS Monterey, and now you want to be able to use the over-the-air updates and the software update pane to be able to update to the latest version of the operating system. I'm going to show you how to do that along with how to update the Open Core Legacy Patcher application to the latest version and also use the menu system to update your EFI and for the latest volume patches for your graphics card. So I'm going to go over all that and more in a live demo on an unsupported Mac to show you how to do it. We got a lot to cover. Let's get started. Okay, one really important thing before we start. It doesn't matter if you have an unsupported Mac or a supported Mac, always make sure you create a backup, a time machine, or have an external hard drive with all your very important files on there before you begin any update. The reason behind that is if something goes wrong, you always have your files backed up. Now with that out of the way, I also wanna make sure that you still have your Open Core Legacy Patcher USB flash drive around just in case something goes wrong. You can always boot to that to get to recovery or reinstall Mac OS over the top if something doesn't go right. So you don't want to be left out in the cold with having to deal with internet recovery and maybe there's something went wrong with that. If you had that USB, you'll always be okay. And I go over how to create that USB in both my Big Sur and my Monterey video just in case you use that USB and then you erase it to use it for something else and you want to start the update. So we had that out of the way, now we can get started. Okay, let's go over the table of contents in this video. The first thing we're going to do is show you how to do an over-the-air update on this unsupported supported Mac from early 2013. After that, and the updates installed, I'm going to show you how to update your Open Core Legacy Patcher app here to the latest version and even check which version you're running so you know if you need to update or not or whether you should just leave it on a certain current version. And then I'm going to show you how to update the volume patches for your graphics card after that. So let's get started on how to update over the air. Now you can see here that I'm running the very first beta and that's probably when the situation that you might be in if you didn't try to update yet. Now beta 2 has been released so we want to be able to update it to the latest one so the first thing we can want to do is go right into system preferences and then click on software update and you can see that there's already one here that tells us there's an update waiting for us so let's click on that and it'll check again but the last time it checked it found something and that's why it put the one down here into the icon now here it is mac os monterey 12 beta 2 is now available now there's a couple things we want to talk about here the first thing is is that there's going to be two types of updates the first update is going to be a full update and that's if you install the volume patches for the HD 4000 graphics card you're gonna to have to install the full 12 gigabyte update and this is gonna probably change later but that's the way it is now if you have a Mac that you didn't need to install those drives for the HD 4000 for example the 2014 or newer Mac then when you click on more info here you'll see that it's only about 3 gigabytes in size and all you need to do is click install now now when we click and install now it's immediately going to start downloading the update unless you have these settings in here automatically selected so this particular Mac it was automatically set to download the new updates and when available so what you can do to see if it's already downloaded is is wait till this re refreshes its check again and then click update now when you do that you'll get the agreement screen and then you'll see if it already has it downloaded so it's saying it's downloading but then the progress bar goes almost all, to the, all the way to the end here. So now you can see that it's preparing. That means that the update has already downloaded on this Mac and it's already getting it ready for you to, to install it. It's preparing in the background and it's telling us it's going to take about 20 minutes to do that. And it's going to tell us that we're going to need to restart to the update. When that happens, the Mac will restart to the black screen with the Apple logo with a progress bar telling us how long it's going to take to finish the installing the update. When this update finishes and comes back into the operating system, I'm going to show you how to check the version of OpenCore that you're running, how to check the, what is the latest version, and then I'll show you how to update the app and then the post install volume patch too. So we'll catch you on the other side. Okay, we're back. So the first thing we want to do is check to see what version of Open Core Legacy Patcher that we're running. So we'll open up Macintosh Hard Drive or we'll click on Finder here. And then we will go into our Applications folder and then open up Open Core Legacy Patcher. When this opens, we have already have some information right off the bat here. We automatically see that we are on Open Core Legacy Patcher version 0.1.9. And it also shows that we're on a MacBook Pro 10,1. And it also shows you if when you're running the application 
application, it checks to see if this model is supported for Open Core Legacy Patcher. Now that we know that what version of Open Core Legacy Patcher is, we need to see what the latest version is. So if we go to, and I'll put all these links in the description here, what we'll need to do is go to the Open Core Legacy Patcher GitHub, just like when we first installed. So once we're here, we can check the latest release and you can see, hey, 0.2.2 was released. So we can click on that and see what's going on. Now, what's interesting is, is I get a lot of questions. Should I update to the latest version? Now, that's a, that's a loaded question because sometimes if your machine is running just fine, there's really no reason to update. But this development is going so fast that things are being fixed and repaired at each version. And you can see these releases here. We can go back to the releases tab here and then look at all the different releases and see all these things that have been fixed when each version was released. Now think about that. You might be seeing something that's not working. The recommendation is to stay on the latest version. Now you don't have to check this every day, but every once in a while, maybe when a new update comes out, update the Open Core Legacy Patcher app. So now that we know that, let's update. So we'll go back here to the latest release. And then we want to download the open core patcher app.zip. This is the same thing that we did when we first installed it. We'll click that, it'll go down to our downloads folder and hop when it's done. We'll click on downloads and we'll see that the open core legacy patcher 2 is already in there if you had your previous one in there. So we'll open up our finder window here and then all we need to do is delete this open core app right here and then drag this one over here right to your applications folder. Now that it's in there, we can rename it if it was renamed too, just by clicking on the text once, and then we can make sure that it's named correctly, Open Core Patcher. Now let's open it up. And you'll see this, you can click open here, and there we go. Now we are on 0.2.2, the latest version. Now, keep in mind, this doesn't fix those issues by just having the application installed on your Mac. You have to build the open core to include those changes and then install them to your EFI on your hard drive. But let's check these patcher settings before we do that. So we gotta go click number five to go in the patcher settings here and hit enter. And we wanna just check these settings here. These are all the defaulted options are usually just fine. I usually turn off number four to not show that boot picker mode. I want it to start up like a regular Mac does. You can still get to the open core legacy patch or menu when you hold down option and hit the space bar. But with this, it just, when you start your Mac, it boots right up to the Apple logo and goes right into the operating system. So we'll click on number four on that. And then we want we do not want to show the uh, default boot picker. We'll hit no, and then we those settings are made. We'll hit Q to quit, and now we can build Open Core to that temporary file location. So we'll click number one and hit enter, and there it goes. It's built right here to private var folders, and this temporary folder is built. So we'll hit enter to go back. Now that that's built, we can install it on our internal SSD again, and it's going to overwrite the current settings, install the latest version to fix all those issues with 0.2.2. So we'll click number number two and we'll hit zero and we will hit number one to do it to the EFI partition. We need to type in our administrator password. As you can see, it removed all the pre-existing files and it copies the open core to the EFI partition. And it added a new icon, it cleaned it up and it unmounted and the open core transfer is complete. Hit enter. Now we're back to there. Now the EFI partition when we boot is updated to the latest version. For those settings to take effect, we're gonna to have to reboot and once we do, we're all updated. The other thing we have to think about is the post install volume patch. Okay, that's for the, right now, the HD 4000 for Monterey and for unsupported graphics chips for Big Sur devices from 2008 to 2012, you install this patch. So if there's any new updates or some changes to the code there, we need to do this too. So we'll hit number three. Now keep in mind, again, if you have a metal Mac, you don't have to do this, whether you're on Mac OS Big Sur open core or Mac OS Monterey. So we'll hit number three and we'll patch the volume with number one and you would like to continue with the patching? Yes, we do. Now keep in mind, we do not have to update the EFI every time, but every time that we install 
a over-the-air update, we will have to install the volume patches because they get overwritten by the update. So after the Mac comes back up, it might be a little bit slow because of those files got overwritten. And then once we get back to the operating system, we fire up open core and then we overwrite those settings that were changed for the volume patch for the graphics chip. And then a reboot is required. So we'll hit enter to continue and we will need to type in the administrator password here in terminal and hit enter for a cache rebuild. And then finally hit enter to create a snapshot. We'll hit enter to continue and we're back to the main menu. All we need to do is restart. So we'll hit Q to quit and we'll restart the Mac. And there we go. Once it comes back up, it'll have the new EFI patches and the new volume patch for the graphics driver. So that's updating your macOS Monterey or macOS Big Sur open core legacy patch or unsupported Mac to the latest version using over the air updates and system preferences and how to update your open core legacy patch or app and how to update the volume patches after the update. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments and I'll answer them. And if you found value in this video, give it a thumbs up. It really helps me out. If you want to see more videos like this in the future, click that subscribe button. And if you're already a subscriber, you know, I truly appreciate it and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.